In today's show, Bitcoin traders eye levels to hold as decision time looms for the Bitcoin price. In today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest technical analysis and quoting crypto analyst Trader J. Next week, decision time, Bitcoin will go to 30 to 40,000 or 12 to 15,000. I want a weekly close above 22,000. $400. And he also says, and I know we're still in a bear market and we will be in a bear market until next year. So all bullish trends are temporary moves, including Rec Capital. Bitcoin is 6% above the 200 week moving average. To perform a reclaim of the 200 week moving average of support, Bitcoin needs to weekly close above $22,800. Also, be sharing the latest updates from Plan B, creator of the Bitcoin Stock the Flow model. Also, in today's show, three Eros Capital founders reveal ties to Terra founder and blame overconfidence. For the collapse as shared here if we would have seen that you know that this was now like potentially like attackable in some ways and that it had grown to you know too big too fast throughout that period we continue to do business as usual but then yeah after that day when you know bitcoin went from 30 to twenty thousand dollars you know that that was extremely painful for us and that was in that ended up being kind of the nail in the coffin also in today's show prince philip of serbia calms rumors of arab country bitcoin adoption quoting him here is definitely going to happen but i don't know which country or who is going to do it where or anything like that but it's bound to happen every country will eventually adopt bitcoin also in today's show large institutions sold five and a half billion dollars in btc since may and we're still here that's right 236,237 btc to be exact that's the amount of known selling of bitcoin since may 10th by large institutions most of the selling is related to forced selling and some is not. Also in today's show, experts say Bitcoin could hit $100,000 this year. In 2022, I'll be breaking down the latest Bitcoin price predictions from Ian Bellina, who says Bitcoin can go to $100,000 to $150,000. Matthew Highland says Bitcoin can still reach $100,000 this year. And Robert Breedlove, who says Bitcoin will reach $12.5 million by 2031. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this, plus so much more in today's show. Here at Crypto News Alerts, I drop a brand new episode every single day. The goal is to get to 100,000 subs. If you like getting that crypto, be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, just like this. Be sure to check out Crypto News Alert Shorts. I release a new shorts video every day here on the YouTube channel. And today's episode is brought to you by iTrust Capital, the number one crypto IRA platform in America, where you can trade all the top cryptocurrencies tax-free, including including Bitcoin, Ethereum, Chainlink, and Polkadot. And as you can see here, they have over $5.5 billion in transactions with over 175,000 accounts created with 2,000 plus five-star reviews, truly making I trust a no-brainer. So go ahead and use my referral link in the description right down below to set up your iTrust Capital account today and claim your free bonus of up to $100 in Bitcoin. And let's get this crypto tax-free. All right, welcome back to another episode of Crypto News Alerts. I'm your host, JV. How's it going, my crypto fam? Guess what? Do things look a little different today? I finally set up the new office here at the new crib and I got the green screen. So no more background. Let me know if you're feeling it. Holla at your boy in the comments below. Now, Bitcoin recovered above $23,000 into July 22nd as attention increasingly focused on the upcoming weekly close. And here you're looking at the Bitcoin, one hour candle chart. Now data from Cointelegraph Markets Pro and Trading View should Bitcoin finding renewed strength after briefly dipping towards 22K. Now the Bitcoin slash USD pair traded in a critical zone for the bulls on the day with the 50 day and 200 week moving averages still yet to flip from resistance to support. And analysts were holding off for the weekly candle close to determine the strength of Bitcoin's latest uptrend, which at one point delivered weekly gains of up to 25%. Quitting crypto analysts for capital, Bitcoin is 6% plus above the 200 week moving average. To perform a reclaim of the 200 week moving average of support, Bitcoin needs to weekly close above $22,800. And for fellow trader Jay, meanwhile, $22,400 was more important as a minimum level to close out the week. As he shares here on crypto Twitter, next week decision time, Bitcoin will go to 30 to 40,000 or 12 to 15,000. I want a weekly close above 22,000. 
$400 and he also shares and I know we're still in a bear market and we'll be in a bear market until next year. So all bullish trends are temporary moves. And in its latest market update released on the day, trading firm QCP Capital voiced reservations about the near-term potential for either Bitcoin or altcoins to rise much higher, quoting them here, in terms of spot direction, we're not sure if the upside momentum continues in a big way. The speed of this move higher felt position driven, market was caught short and the market is starting to show some signs of exhaustion. Now, QCP pointed to the upcoming meeting of the United States Federal Reserve's Federal Open Markets Committee on July 27th as a major volatility event to come. Now, markets, it added, were now pricing in a 75 basis point hike in key interest rates this month rather than the higher 100 basis point option feared on the back of the inflation numbers. Quoting them here, since the high CPI print, the market has been decisively pricing out the probability of a 100 BPS hike in the July FOMC. The update read, currently a 20% chance of 100 BPS is still being priced in, but our view is that 75 BPS is the most the Fed will do, so expect another boost as 100 BPS gets completely priced out. Meanwhile, bets increased on a dollar breakdown as the US dollar currency index consolidated below 20 year highs. Meanwhile, analysts were waiting for a long term parabolic uptrend to show signs of cracking. And right here, you're looking at the US dollar currency index versus Bitcoin one day candle chart. Now the US dollar as Cointelegraph continues to report remains distinctly inversely correlated with crypto asset performance as shared here by proof of Steve. What happens when the US dollar currency index parabola and TNX neckline break? One guess only. Bitcoin. And as shared here, it'll be a good day when this finally breaks, referring to the US dollar currency index. And checking out the latest from Plan B, creator of the Bitcoin stock to flow model. He recently polled his audience. Current situation, number one, low end of normal cycle, a great buying opportunity like end 2011, beginning 2012, 2015, and the end 2018 and beginning of 2019. Or number two, this time is different. Cycles are dead. Past says nothing. And 56.6% of you said normal cycle, while 43.4% of you said this time is different. And this morning, he updates us here. 50% think this is a normal cycle and an excellent buying opportunity like in 2012, 2015, and 2019. 50% think cycles are dead and this time is different. Which group are you in and since when do you own Bitcoin? And he shares here, while 36.2% of you said normal cycle and got in Bitcoin between 2009 and 2020. And before I break down next story of the day, three Eros Capital founders reveal ties to Terra founder and blame overconfidence for the collapse. But first, let's take a quick look at the overall crypto market. As you can see, Bitcoin, Ether, and all the major alts are currently pumping. And in the green, Bitcoin up 3.5% for the day, trading above $23,600. We have Ether up a whopping 8%, trading above $1,600. While Binance Coin, XRP, Cardano, Solana, and Polkadot are all pumping. And in the green, but all right, now let's break down our next story of the day. The founders of tainted crypto hedge fund Three Arrows Capital, which filed for bankruptcy in the first week of July, have finally resurfaced after five weeks of no known whereabouts. In a new interview with Bloomberg, Su Zhu and Kyle Davies, the two founders of the crypto hedge fund, admitted that the overconfidence born out of the multi-year bull market, where lenders saw their values swell by virtue of financing firms like their own, led to a series of bad decisions that should have been avoided. Su Zhu also revealed their closeness to Terra founder Do Kwan and claimed they believed that the firm was going to do big things. He admitted that the firm's closeness to Terra made them overlook certain red flags about the firm, which eventually led to their $500 million worth of investment going to zero, quoting him here. If we would have seen that, you know that this is now like potentially like attackable in some ways and that it has grown to, you know, too big too fast. The two founders claim that Luna, now known as Luna Classic, the investment surely was a setback for the firm. Still, the real issue began when Bitcoin fell below $20,000 and it became impossible for the firm to access additional credit. He claimed that even after Luna's collapse, the business was as usual and explained the following. Throughout that period, we continue to do business as usual. But then, yeah, after that day when, you know, Bitcoin went from thirty dollars to $20,000, you know that that was extremely painful for us. And that was in what ended up up being kind of the nail in the coffin. That's right. And when inquired about their whereabouts and why they had been in the hiding, the founders blamed the series of death threats as the reason for going underground. The duo didn't reveal their current whereabouts, but said that they were moving to Dubai. 
Go figure. The founders denied any allegations of pulling out money before Three Arrows Capital went bankrupt and also cleared the air around the $50 million yacht that was disclosed in the recent filed court case. Now, Shuzu said that the boat was bought over a year ago and commissioned to be built and to be used in Europe while adding that the yacht has a full money trail. So there you have it. Just follow the money. What are your thoughts surrounding Three Arrows Capital founders revealing their ties to Terra founder Do Kwan and blaming overconfidence for the collapse? Let me know in the comments below. And before I break down next breaking story of the day, Prince Philip of Serbia calms rumors of Arab country Bitcoin adoption. But first, let's take a quick look at the overall crypto market cap. Sent just under $1.1 trillion with $77.6 billion in volume in the past 24 hours. The current Bitcoin dominance is 42% with the Ether dominance at 18%. 0.6%. And checking out the top 100 cryptocurrency gainers in the past 24 hours, we have Bitcoin Gold leading the pack up 25% for the day, trading at $22.48, followed by Curved Dow Token up 21%, trading at $1.46, followed by ApeCoin up almost 20%, trading at $6.83. And checking out the top 100 cryptocurrency gainers in the past week, you can see literally a sea of green with the only one in the red, which is Luna Classic down 6%. We have Ethereum Classic up 73%, Lido up up 57.8% and Bitcoin Gold up 56. 0.3%. And checking out one of my favorite indicators is the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. Shows we are currently rated a 33 in fear. Yesterday a 34, last week a 15, and last month an 11 in extreme fear. And if you're not familiar with the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, extreme fear can be a sign. Investors are too worried. That could be a great buying opportunity, aka BTFD, buy that freaking dip. And when investors are getting too greedy, that means the market is due for a correction. But all right, now let's break down our next story of the day. Prince Philip placated rumors that an Arab country was soon adopt Bitcoin as legal tender. Let's go. In a new interview Philip delivered from Serbia, the prince explained that Bitcoin adoption is inevitable for all countries. As a result of this thesis, he first shared on a Bitcoin Reserves podcast, some news outlets jumped at the comments. Now headlines that an Arab country would soon adopt Bitcoin quickly disseminated. However, as a Bitcoin advocate, Philip expounded that Bitcoin adoption is in fact inevitable for all countries and not just Arab states, quoting him here, is definitely going to happen, but I don't know which country or who is going to do it, where, or anything like that, but it's bound to happen. Every country will eventually adopt Bitcoin. I agree 100%. Let the Bitcoin game theory take full effect. The print shared that Bitcoin is an excellent fit for Muslim countries because it makes perfect Sharia money. And in the case of money, Philip would argue that Bitcoin is in fact hollow and the perfect form of Islamic finance. Quoting him here, it's only a matter of time before a Muslim country that follows Sharia law would have to adopt it. Some people grab that and make it a selling item, saying that of course, if a prince knows it, that some Arab or Muslim country is going to adopt Bitcoin soon, then it's going to happen. Now check this out. Prince Philip is technically the prince of Serbia and Yugoslavia because when the monarchy was abolished, Serbia as a country had not been created, but today obviously Yugoslavia doesn't exist. And since we are Serbian origin, then it's Serbia, Philip clarified. Nowadays, Serbia is a parliamentary republic, although some Serbs support the creation a parliamentary monarchy similar to the United Kingdom. Philip burst onto the Bitcoin scene in March of this year when he appeared on a chat show. He explained the difference between Bitcoin and crypto, adding that Bitcoin is freedom and this is something that I want for everyone very powerful words. And Philip told Cointelegraph that a three-minute video changed his life. He was a guest at the Bitcoin Miami 2022 conference. How many of you were there as well? I know I was there. And even played a role at the president of Madeira's journey into Bitcoin. And regarding Bitcoin adoption in Serbia, sadly, the prince cannot wave a royal wand and create a Serbian style El Salvador in Europe. But nonetheless, there are certain benefits to Serbia adopting Bitcoin. The prince notes, there are a lot of Serbs around the world. It's a huge diaspora. I think the biggest concentration or the biggest diaspora is in Canada than Chicago. The remittance use case for approximately 500,000 Serbs living outside of Serbia who regularly send money to their home country is convincing. And given that Bitcoin transcends borders, offering people a way to instantly send value across the world without a middleman, it could bolster Serbia's economy. And for El Salvador, in the first year of adopting Bitcoin, remittances into the country exceeded $50 million. And furthermore, Serbia neighbors the Free Republic of Liberland, a micro nation nestled upon a thin stretch of land on 
the Danabe River, Liberlin adopted Bitcoin as currency over seven years ago. There is evidence of grassroots Bitcoin advocacy in the Balkans, plus one of the world's most decorated tennis players, Novak Djokovic, is a Serb. He's also a freedom lover and has a staunch anti-state view. In the prince's eyes, he's an obvious orange pill that needs to happen 100%. And before I break down next story of the day, large institutions sold five and a half billion in Bitcoin since May, and we're still here, as well as experts say Bitcoin could get $100,000 this year in 2022, and I share what investors should know. But first, I want to remind you to smash that show more button right below this video in the description for a detailed analysis of what's going on in the crypto market. This goes for all 1,200 plus videos right here on my YouTube channel. And the greatest thing you can do to show love, support the channel and this Bitcoin movement is smash that subscribe button, ring that bell, and drop a comment right down below because it helps out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. Also be sure to follow us on all the major podcasts and platforms from Spotify, home of the Joe Rogan Experience, to Apple's iTunes and Google Play. And if you're currently listening to the pod, be sure to check out the YouTube channel at cryptonewsalerts.net for the full premium experience with video. And of course, you can follow me all across social media from Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. So wherever you're at, be sure to plug in and follow me there. But all right, now let's break down our next story of the day. Since May 10th, as much as 236,237 BTC, worth about $5.5 billion at the time of this recording, has been sold by large institutions, mostly as a result of forced selling. That's right, a Twitter thread from Arcane Research. Analyst Vettel Lunde details how many institutional Bitcoin hodlers began selling their stacks and stated it all started with Do Kwan. He shares this pretty awesome Twitter thread here, 236,237 BTC. That's the amount of known selling Bitcoin since May 10th by large institutions. Most of the selling is related to forced selling and some is not. Now the Luna Foundation Guard, which controlled funds for the Terra project, dumped over 80,000 BTC in a failed effort to protect the peg of its native Terra USD Classic stablecoin back in May. And Terra's collapse appears to have put some pressure on some Bitcoin miners to sell. Now estimated that miners sold over 19,000 coins between May and June. And in some cases, miners were selling more than their monthly production, like drawing from their reserves. Lunde noted that as miner selling peaked, Elon's Tesla also hit the red button and sold 29,060 Bitcoin by the end of quarter two, which was almost a billion dollars in BTC. And yes, they bought high and sold low. So don't follow the likes of Tesla and Elon. And at the same time, the Three Arrows Capital crypto investment firm was over leveraged and owed lenders over 18,100 Bitcoin and other coins equivalent to over 22,000 BTC. Lunde also added that a massive 24,000 Bitcoin redemption took place at the Canadian Purpose Bitcoin exchange traded fund, better known as an ETF, in late June, creating further fire sale pressure in the market. That redemption accounted for 51% of that ETF's holdings. Now, despite the crypto market seeing tremendous sell pressure from institutions in the recent months, the Bitcoin market remains remarkably resilient. That's right. Trading volumes have also remained higher through the 2022 market downturn compared to the peak of the 2017 bull market. On December 17, 2017, Bitcoin's daily trading volume reached a cycle peak of $12 billion, while daily Daily volume in July of 2022 has been above 20 billion, according to CoinGecko. So the growth is absolutely there. Now, CEO of Singapore based market maker Presto Labs. Kim agreed with Lunde that liquidations from Three Arrows Capital and others caused a significant price drop in June, but believes that the Bitcoin price action will return to 30,000 within the next few months. Let me know if you agree or disagree. On Thursday, he told Cointelegraph that those liquidations pushed Bitcoin price below the fundamental equilibrium price, leading him to believe that the prices will return to $30,000 in the next few months. And Kim added it'll take time for retail investors to regain their confidence in crypto after what they endured over the past few months and that institutional investments will rise again. Quoting him here, I think the retail sentiment is completely broken, so it'll take some time before we restore confidence in the market, but there will be some reversal by the end of this year, counteracting the liquidations. And concluded with this, I tend to lean in the favor of forced selling and contagion-related uncertainty being done for now. We will likely slump, pump, and dump in choppy conditions in the coming period. And to check out this entire thread by Lunde, which is very detailed with a lot of great insights and information, check the show notes below the video in the description. But all right, now let's break down our final story of the day and discuss a $100,000 Bitcoin price this year. While it's easy to predict the $100,000 Bitcoin price late last year, coming off its latest all-time high in November of $69,000, with Bitcoin's big fall since then, the prediction game 
is even trickier. The most extreme crypto skeptics say Bitcoin will tank to as low as 10,000 this year in 2022, but a middle ground might be to say that the cryptocurrency can still climb to 100,000 like many experts predicted late last year. Just on a slower timeline, investors should expect a pretty sustainable rise in Bitcoin's long-term value driven by organic market movement with the $100,000 threshold in near sight, predicted Jurian Timmer, Director of Global Macro Fidelity Investments. Last October, what I expect from Bitcoin is volatility in the short term, growth in the long term, said Kiana Daniel, founder of Invest Diva and author of Cryptocurrency Investing for Dummies. And here are some more predictions which were found and ranked from low to high over the next year. We have Ann Bellina, Bitcoin investor and founder of crypto research and media company Token Metrics, with a prediction of Bitcoin going to hundred to $150,000, but the timeline is unclear. And for reasoning why, Bitcoin is a bearish sentiment cycle, but the total crypto market and other crypto asset classes are not. Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency, but now others have surpassed it in innovation. When when it comes to what experts call Web3, aka the new internet built on blockchain, the release of new altcoins and hype about the metaverse will continue to drive the demand for crypto and Bitcoin will therefore bounce back eventually. Next up, we have Matthew Highland, a technical analysis and blockchain data analyst who says Bitcoin can reach 100,000 this year in 2022. Why? The price of Bitcoin in January 2022 is almost equal to its price in January 2021, but there is a new demand for altcoins. There is also an ongoing trend of Bitcoin supply, leaving major exchanges. Highland said in a tweet, he also recently tweeted that a dip below 40,000 could lead to a free fall in a Bitcoin bear market, which is precisely what we witnessed, a free fall down to 17,000. $600. Next up, we have Robert Breedlove, founder and CEO of the digital asset marketing consulting firm Parallax Digital. His prediction originally was $307,000 by October 2021, which has now obviously passed, and $12.5 million by 2031. And his reasoning why inflationary pressures after COVID will drive interest in crypto, pushing the value of Bitcoin up higher than previous projected estimates. Breedlove said in an interview earlier this year, we also have big financial institutions which have made their own predictions as well, with JP Morgan predicting a long-term high of $146,000 for the King Crypto and Bloomberg predicting it could hit $400,000 per BTC if the currency climbs at rates comparable to the past. So there you have it. What's your Bitcoin price prediction for this year in 2022? Do you think will likely exceed the six-figure mark? Let me know in the comments right down below. Now for the top three comments from yesterday's episode, Digital Gravity wrote, I am sorry, I won't be missing Elon Musk. Dude is all over the map these days. Bitcoin needs no one individual, not even Satoshi Nakamoto. The only silver lining from this is it proves large corporations can dip in and out of Bitcoin. The liquidity is there. Well said, man. Agreed 100%. Hoddle. Our next featured comment comes from Steve Hubbs. Bitcoin didn't fall 50% from its November 2021 $69,000 high. It fell 74.5% to the $17,567 high made in June 2022. Thanks for sharing and bringing to my attention. And our third and final featured comment comes from Inner Dino. Thanks, JV. Excellent show. I am bullish as what? Cheers, fam. Let's go. And to be featured on tomorrow's episode, drop me a comment right down below.